I am Batman. I mean, Average Sniper. What's up everybody, Average Sniper here and welcome to another PUBG video. Now before we get started, I want to calm you all down and say Sandhawk is not out on Xbox yet and I'm not 100% sure when it is going to be out, but we are sure that it will come to Xbox sometime soon. So I decided to make this video and show you guys that don't have PUBG on PC where all the best looting spots are, the best landing spots, and uh, basically just give some pointers. So let's start with the best looting spots and landing spots so you guys can be ready uh, to totally own some noobs that don't know what they're doing when Sandhawk comes out for Xbox One. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, one of the most popular places is Paradise Resort, right here. Paradise Resort is loaded, and I mean loaded with weapons. They are everywhere. It is it's crazy, oh, even on the ground outside the building. So if you land here, be ready for a fight, because you know as soon as people figure out that there's so much loot here, that's where they're going to be going. Second most popular spot, I would say, is... The ruins. Now the ruins has, it, it looks like a little small little blip right there, but it has an amazing amount of loot. I mean, my God, the loot there is so good. You cannot land and not find an assault rifle or an SMG almost immediately. So there's gonna be a lot of people jumping there because it's high loot, high risk. Another place with really good loot, the docks. Now the docks doesn't have good loot like Paradise Resort and Ruins, but it does have really good loot, okay? Um, you're you're not going to have any trouble finding an assault rifle or an SMG, but there might be one part where you only find a shotgun and some other guys get all the good loot. So it's a great place, but a little risky. All right, so then we have all these little small areas like uh, Sam He, Camp Charlie, pretty much all the boot camps. You're going to find good loot there. It's not going to be as good loot as um, the ruins or Paradise Resort or docks, but it could be. I mean, uh, sometimes you just get lucky, you know, with the RNG and find really good stuff. So all those places can be hot spots depending on where the plane flies. So if you want to get into a fight and the plane's flying on the path right here, um, maybe go to um, Sami or Camp Charlie or uh, Pai Nan. You'll find some good loot and you'll find a fight. Now, if you're just looking to get more familiar with the map, pretty much go to any of these little places. They have great buildings and there's there's almost always good loot. I mean, there's amazing loot at the place that we talked about, but this map in general has good loot everywhere. I mean, there is good loot everywhere. What I like to do, if I don't feel like doing a hot drop at one of these places, is I like to land somewhere that has warehouses, like um, right here. Looks like a couple warehouses there. Um, let's see other places right here. Looks like some warehouses there. Warehouses are usually rectangular, so they're easier to spot and they're a little bigger other than houses. Now, if you really want to play it safe, then go someplace like right there. You know, you'll find, uh, you'll definitely find a gun. You'll be close enough, you know, to these other places that you can just run over to them when you get done looting and find what you need. Um, like I said, the loot's really good on this map, so regardless of where you land, you're probably going to end up finding some good loot. Another thing I should mention is that docks, like down here by Bantai, uh, docks and piers always have seem to have amazingly good loot. And don't forget to check out the cave. The cave... The loot's not that great at the cave. I mean, you'll definitely find some guns, but it's really fun to parachute in through that giant hole in the ground and land inside the cave and uh, loot up while you fight other people. It's just it's just really cool. So I hope that's, that helps you guys. Let's get into uh, some gameplay now. All right, guys. So since I started playing Sandhawk, I've kind of got into a groove with it, and I'm going to give you guys my opinion and advice on how you can be the last man standing and get that chicken dinner. This is not a guide on how to get 20 kills per match or anything like that. This is just how you can basically get what you need to stay alive, make it to the final circle, and come out as the last man standing. Okay, so um, in this one, I landed at the ruins, which is a pretty high-risk area, but in this particular scenario, there was only one guy there because it was a pretty long... Uh, it was pretty far away from the original flight path, and I um, only had to deal with this one guy. Once I killed him, I was able to obtain pretty much all the loot I needed to carry me through the rest of the match. And I'm going to put this in fast motion so that you can see how much loot is available just in one single inside level, interior level of the um, 
Ruins. The ruins are really amazing. Ruins, Paradise Resort, Docks. Amazing loot, just like this. There's even more loot than this at uh, Paradise Resort, believe it or not. So as you can see, um, just on the first level and in the basement, I was able to find pretty much everything I needed to make it through the rest of the match. So if you're into landing at high risk, high reward areas, you're always going to come out of there. If you survive, you're always going to come out of there looted to the teeth, pretty much not needing anything else in the game except maybe some extra goodies from a care package. Now, I want to talk about the best guns, the best loadout to have on this on this map, okay? So, in my opinion, the best loadout to have is obviously all level 3 gear, but we already know that. A submachine gun as your primary and a sniper rifle as your secondary. Now, that's not always an option, so basically, whatever you can get, just get. Obviously, I took the Groza because that's one of the best assault rifles in the game, and I uh, stuck with that for this gameplay, but you will see later on how I like to employ the SMG and the uh, sniper rifle um, loadout. I think the SMG is good to have because it's recently been buffed and the assault rifles have been nerfed. You're going to run into a lot of close range situations on this map. You're also going to run into a lot of surprise situations where you have enemies hiding behind rocks and trees, uh, bushes, and in houses. Now at first glance this map like this area seems pretty open and it kind of is but for, for every five square feet you have a tree, a bush, or a rock that a potential enemy could be sitting behind and utilizing as cover. So be very careful when moving about the map. The, the most common way I die on this map is by running past a rock or a tree and uh, there's just somebody camping there waiting for me to run past. Okay, so very careful out there. Use that to your advantage. Use those rocks and trees to your advantage. Just be careful when you have to move through them because it might seem like you're in a very open area, but trust me, you are not. There are enemies everywhere. This map is super small, which clusters people together a lot more than the other maps who have tons of campers utilizing this to their advantage, okay? Um, so let's go back and talk about um, more strategy for like the end game. As you can see, I'm in the end game here. Now, one of the things you want to do in the end game, you'll have these little huts and these little villages pretty much everywhere. You want to use those to your advantage as much as possible. And I know that seems very obvious, but I can't stress enough how important it is to have good cover on this map just because of the sheer amount of enemies in a small area you do not want to be out in the open in the top 20 situation the top 10 situation once you get past top 20 you do not want to be in the open at all find a village like this right here with houses that you can get in and you can basically use to your advantage i mean that's that's the best way to put it you're gonna you're gonna camp in a house in the top 20 that's gonna be your best way to survive if the circle moves and you're in it that's great if the circle moves and you have to move good luck <laughs> and if you happen to be outside of a house try and keep yourself hidden from view of the windows as much as possible i get so many kills just peeking through the windows waiting for people to take cover right in front of me i can't tell you how many times i've been in these houses in the top 20 situation and people just go right in front of my window not knowing i'm there take cover on a tree or something and start sniping at somebody else okay it's crazy it's crazy. That's more of a mid to end game strategy. You can employ it the entire match if you want to, but for most people, if you don't land dead center in the circle, you're going to have to move. So just remember, be careful moving past all those scary trees and rocks and bushes <laughs> where all the enemies are camping. It can be a little stressful at times, but hey, that's okay. Now, the final circle, let's talk about the final circle. We've been talking about the top 20 and the top 10, but the final circle isn't going to be too different. First off, if you have a hut that you can get into within the final circle, do that. Avoid the little sniper towers. You will see little sniper towers all throughout the map. Those are death traps. I've almost hardly ever get killed by people in there. I have probably like a 95% success rate of killing people out of the sniper towers because when you get in there, you trap yourself, okay? And uh, you do not want to trap yourself. So being in a hut, is not the same as being in a sniper tower. You're not trapped, okay? And being in a hut, you can see what's going on on the outside and they're pretty much not gonna be able to see you on the inside. So when you're in that final circle situation, if a hut is available 
then definitely do your best to get in it and utilize those windows for cover. Be careful about people coming in and jumping in behind you. That's another thing I wanted to tell you about the advantage of these little huts everywhere is that it's very easy to hear when an enemy is coming through a doorway or when an enemy is jumping through a window. And the way these huts are laid out, the way these huts are laid out, it's very easy for people to jump through windows, get in doorways, and uh, flank you. But if you have a good headset and you can hear them coming, they will never get the drop on you. You have uh, corners that you can use to your advantage. You have little closets and things like that. So this is a perfect example you know, of a hut that I'm using for cover. And a guy tries to come in behind me while I'm recovering you know, from shooting at that guy. If you listen, you'll be able to hear him. So he came through the window and if the background music is too loud and you weren't able to hear him, just take my word for it. In the actual game, he was very easy to hear coming through that window, very easy to kill, even though I had to cancel my first aid kit. Now we're in a 1v1 situation. If you know where the other guy is, you will play this just like it's any other map, okay? Just like it's any other map. Use whatever cover you can find. Tree, rock, uh, structure, building, whatever. In this certain situation, I had the advantage. This guy had to push to me, and uh, he was an easy kill to finish off for the chicken dinner. Now let's say you get trapped outside, okay? Let's say you get trapped outside. There's no huts. You're in the top 10 final circle situation, and there's really no cover except for trees and rocks. I would say your best bet is to find one of the big boulders. The big boulders are much better than having cover on a tree because you can maneuver around them, especially if you have multiple enemies shooting at you. You can make circles around the boulder to get cover from one enemy while you take the other one out. On the little trees in this map, that's pretty much not possible, okay? So if you don't have a hut that you can go into in the final circle, just utilize those rocks. Those boulders are epic. I've gotten plenty of just like this. See this boulder right here? That's what I'm talking about. Excellent cover. Be careful running up to those things because there's pretty much an enemy behind every single one so that's let's just uh, recap real quick guys i know it seems like basic stuff but trust me if you just keep this in the back of your head this will help you a lot okay so um you can choose to land you know high risk or medium risk there's 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 hardly any low risk unless you decide to fly all the way across the map from the from the flight path of the plane um so that's up to you that's however you like to play high risk low risk we got ruins paradise resort and docks is pretty much the high risk areas and any of the little or any of the bigger villages and boot camps all right this is, is going to help you out a lot all right and uh, the best guns to have i would say would be an smg sniper combo uh, if you're more of an assault rifle fan that's fine i just prefer the smg if i can find one and a sniper rifle since they've recently been uh since smgs have been buffed um best cover to use always be in a hut always be in a hut if you can that's going to give you the advantage just watch you don't get your head blown off peeking the window too hard uh the best strategy to employ Basically, um, if you're going for the win, play cautious, use cover, don't go running around the map because like we talked about, there's going to be an enemy behind every bush, every rock, and every tree, or that's pretty much how it's going to seem like. Now here's a perfect example of ha how to handle the final circle if you have a building you can use to your advantage. As you will see right here, we're going to jump to only a few people left alive. We got five people left alive. I've got the perfect building right here um, that I can see people out, out, out crawling around, running past rocks, and they all pretty much have to run past me. So I was in the only buildings that were left in this final circle and it really paid off. I sniped that one guy and then I heard another guy running past my building and uh, just such such easy kills, you know, when you're set up in the right spot. And then I even see the very last guy running for cover. He had the right idea, but the building he was in got pushed out and I don't prefer to be in the warehouses. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's pretty basic advice, but I hope it helps you get some chicken dinners when Sandhawk comes out on Xbox One. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Later.